You know, I hate every ape I see. From Chimpan A to Chimpan Z. You'll never make a monkey out of me. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Crandall Reviews. I am Matthew Crandall, and this is my first review back in a long time, and it is a king-size blockbuster because I have seen Jordan Vogue Roberts' Kong Skull Island, the next movie in the legendary movie franchise that began with Godzilla, now continues in Kong Skull Island, and will eventually lead into some other stuff. This will be a spoiler-free review off the top. I'll give you plenty of warning before I get into any sort of spoiler territory. However, I am going to talk about some stuff that you see in the trailers. And man, the most recent trailer for Kong Skull Island, I just watched after I had seen the movie. And they give you a lot of the money shots in that third trailer. So hopefully you stayed away from it because I was really surprised at how revealing it was. Um, but let's talk about the movie. Now, Kong Skull Island is... Basically, as the director himself has described it, kind of Apocalypse Now meets King Kong slash Jurassic Park um, in terms of being a monster movie and a Kong movie, it really does deliver. The action is fun. Kong is enormous, um, badass. You see in the trailer him playing with helicopters like they're toys and just smashing them out of the air and all that kind of stuff just put a big goofy grin on my face. Um, I felt like a kid watching that stuff. King Kong being this massive um, is really cool. And they really handled it well. The effects team at ILM did most of the effects. And it looks great. Kong looks awesome. And all the action is really exciting and fun. Uh, it sort of begins kind of like a lot of these movies do, where they're recruiting the team. And so John Goodman explains what they want to do. They want to go to this island, Skull Island, Um he says it's for like a, a geological survey, but of course he's trying to find monsters. Um, then we meet some of the the military dudes, um, which include Easy E from Straight Outta Compton um, and Nucky's brother from Boardwalk Empire. And then we get introduced to Tom Hiddleston, and his introduction is really good. He's kind of like a badass adventurer type. And they say, we need you. You're the only guy who can get us through this jungle. And then, unfortunately, as the movie progresses, Tom Hiddleston has almost nothing to do and doesn't really prove himself to be sort of this indispensable member of the team, the only guy who can get them through the jungle. And that was one of my only major disappointments in Kong Skull Island that is overall a fantastic, fun blockbuster. If you're looking for a monster movie, this is it. You're going to love it. it. I thought it was better than Gareth Edwards' Godzilla that movie, while visually stunning like this one is, man, Larry Fong is just one of the best cinematographers working today, and him and Jordan have come up with some great visuals for this film. In IMAX 3D, it's stunning. Uh, but a lot of them are cookie-cutter characters who barely have any characterization at all. Brie Larson is an anti-war photographer um, who comes along on the expedition, and her and Tom Hiddleston are two very good-looking people, and I'm endeared to them only because I like them in other stuff. There's a few scenes of banter that's supposed to be funny and fun and endear us to these characters as classic 70s music plays. And honestly, a lot of those moments didn't work for me. Um, Corey Hawkins, Jason Mitchell, a lot of these guys just didn't bring anything to the movie in terms of what they were given. There's just nothing on the page for their characters to really stand out. Toby Kebbell is so great at motion capture. He's up there with Andy Serkis, and he does mocap for this movie, but he's also in it, and his character was so flat that when we're asked to care about him, I just didn't. Now, the saving grace is that moments where there's banter with John C. Riley, who's playing a batshit crazy guy who's been exiled on Skull Island and stuck there for years, all that stuff works. It's fun, it's goofy, it's out there, but that's the kind of stuff that I really liked, and it was fun and endearing. And John C. Riley was nuts and charismatic. And even Brie Larson and Tom Hiddleston came to life in those scenes more than they did in the rest of the movie. 
I just felt if we had a little bit more characterization when the characters were actually in danger, I would have cared more. Now, there is some good danger scenes and a lot of tense moments, but because I didn't care about the cast half the time, you're just going through the motions, waiting for Kong to show up and hoping that there's some monster battles. Um, however, Sam Jackson is Sam Jackson, and he's always interesting and watchable and good. Same with John Goodman. Just both of these guys aren't given that much to do, but it's a small nitpick, and it's one of the things I have to take aim at just because the rest of Kong works so well is fun because the real star here is Kong himself. And I love that they've given him a hero role. Now I'm going to go into a little bit of spoilers in a moment. So if you haven't seen it and you don't want to know anything, just know that it's a fun monster movie. I'd edge it a little bit above Godzilla and I can't wait to see the next one. Now, if you are still here, I'm going to go into a little bit of light spoilers. Um, like I said, some of the characters to me we're just a little flat. I wanted more. When Toby Kebbell is stranded in the, the middle of the most dangerous part of Skull Island, he gets picked off real quick. Now, he's not the star by any means, but he's just kind of a nothing throwaway guy. He's writing letters to his son Billy and he misses him. Well, I need a little bit more than that. Um, and the moment where the dude from Boardwalk Empire sacrifices himself could have been like a big dramatic moment and meaningful, but I didn't care about him either. So it was one of those things like, oh, this guy's going to do that. And then he does it in such a dumb way that it doesn't actually even really help them. It was like, okay, well, I kind of appreciate that aspect of it, but I, I wanted a little bit more, I wanted to be a little bit more invested emotionally. I know that sounds stupid for a big action blockbuster, but I thought that if they had just had a little bit more humor that worked and a little bit better characterization, it would have brought this thing up from like a, a very good movie to like an all time classic. Um, like I said, the cinematography is fantastic. I love the score. The music was exciting and just seeing Kong smash helicopters and wrestle with giant squids and eat them, which answers the question. A lot of people were like, how does a monkey this big, have a food source on Skull Island, and there it is. I thought that was awesome. Seeing Kong take a tree and turn it into a club that he can beat a monster with was badass. Um, having him use tools, like it was just that kind of stuff was really cool, really fun. And I love that there's so much Apocalypse Now like imagery because it's just badass. That shot, um, the out of focus, blazing hot sun as Kong lumbers into the frame. Uh, moments like that are really iconic and memorable. Kind of like Gareth Edwards' Godzilla, for as hollow as it ended up being, had some really iconic visual moments, and this carries those over, but it is so much more fun that I think people are really going to respond to it and have a good time. Stay for the credits. There is a little bit afterwards teasing where we go from here. Um, just know that I didn't think it was a perfect movie, but overall I definitely recommend it, and I'm glad to have King Kong back on the big screen, and kicking butt. So let me know what you thought of Kong Skull Island. Did you like it? Did you think the characters were great? Am I crazy? Am I wrong? Let me know. Like the video. Hit subscribe. And thanks a lot for watching. Hold on to your butts.